The people them are going to laugh at your ideas. I remember when I first started my vending machine business. My first vending machine that I had installed was at my uni. And afterwards, I wanted to expand the business. So I used to go to different office buildings, community centres, leisure centres, you name it. And I used to go into the office buildings or wherever. And usually the first point of call, first point of contact is going to be a receptionist, right? I used to go into these buildings and obviously I used to, you know, pitch my idea to the receptionist in hopes they would give me the building manager's email address. And a lot of the times when I used to go in there, remember this was like four years ago, so I was 24 at the time. When I used to go in there, the receptionists, they used to have like a, a cheeky grin on their face. They used to have like a, a smirk on their face. Like they thought it was funny. Like they thought I was silly or thought I was stupid. When I was working for Holmes Haringey, I actually went into a few of the Haringey buildings whilst I was working for the company. And I remember I went into one of the buildings it used to be on Seven Sisters Road, but they demolished it and they built flats there. I remember I went into the building and I asked for the building manager's contact details. And one of the managers in the building, he's not the building manager, but he's one of the managers in that building. It's like a housing office. He said to me, who's giving you the authority to come here? I'm like, what do you mean? I've just come here off my own back. He's like, no, but who has given you the authority to come into this building? I said, what do you mean? I don't need no authority to go into no building. I've got a business that I'm trying to promote and I've just walked in here. What are you talking about? Anyway, he said, look, I can, I can give you the, the building manager's email address, but, you know, you're just going to have to send it to them and speak to them or whatever. Isn't it? And when I left the building, I'm thinking like, this is how you know the average person can't see past a nine to five they don't know how to step out their comfort zone the man said to me who is giving you authority blood if the door's fucking open to a building i'm gonna walk in i don't need no authority what do you mean who sent me these people are mad but this is the mindset of people the average person cannot fathom starting your own business trying to get out of the nine to five rat race the man asked me who gave you the authority? Like I had the audacity. Like, it, like, like to say I walked into the flipping police station or something like that. Man asks me, who gave you the authority? Like how dare you try and come in here and propose a business plan? Listen, I went everywhere. Everywhere. Islington Town Hall. I went everywhere. I don't give a fuck. Everywhere. And yeah, that business idea, it failed. Now, if I went back to that place, because... The thing that used to get on my nerves about the receptionist and that, I used to pitch my business proposal, my business idea to them in hopes to get, obviously, the building manager's email address to contact the building manager. They used to flat out tell me, no, we don't need it here. Hmm? Some people used to say, no, I, I don't think this is the right place. Who the fuck are you to tell me what you think? You are a receptionist. Whether you like the business idea or not whether you think it's appropriate for a vending machine to be placed here or not you do not have the authority the only thing they should have told me is yes or no i can give you the building manager's email address but these people actually feel like they have authority that's why they used to, when i used to walk in they used to have a smirk and a little silly look on their face and that and i used to speak to myself like when i used to leave the place i'm thinking to myself but most of you lots is going to be working there for the rest of your life. That, that's the reality. Them same people, if they ain't still located in that building, they're somewhere else. Literally. The average person cannot fathom stepping outside of their comfort zone. The average person could not even fathom even getting on YouTube. Something so simple like turning on the camera and talking. They can't fathom it. 
Partly because they're bound and they're scared of what other people think. But it's funny, you know, a lot of people sit on the phone and talk to their friends for hours and talk like they know a lot about stuff. If you know about this and you know about that, why don't you go on to YouTube and spread the knowledge? Because because everyone's a know-it-all, but no one wants to share the knowledge. That's, that's a bit selfish, ain't it? Everyone knows about this, everyone knows about that, but no one wants to share the knowledge. You know why? Because a lot of people are scared to step out of their comfort zone. Oh, everyone's the big man within the confines of their friends and stuff like that on the phone. Not that much people are big on the internet. More so in person. Maybe out on a stage with a hundred people, a hundred eyes looking at them. Oh, that, that, yeah. That takes balls. So everyone knows about this, everyone knows about that, but no one's willing to share the knowledge. What's... What's the flipping point of having knowledge if you're not willing to share? Remember going into these flipping... Man, even... When I installed my second vending machine in the community centre in Islington. Even from that, I made money doing other things as well, you know. So after I installed the vending machine in the community centre in Islington, that was my second one and my final one, I used to walk around with this, it was a stationary box on wheels. So a stationary box, it had a handle that you pull up and you can pull it along, it had wheels, yeah? I was selling lights from the Habitat store and I used to walk into shops and different establishments, community centres, almost like I was trying to pitch for the vending machine business, the same sort of thing. But I used to walk around with this dummy light in the stationary box with a plug on it, and I used to plug it in and show people. I, I've even been into nail shops in my own ends, you know, literally. You know, the nail salon with the, yeah, beer, get up and I don't give a fuck. I mean, no one tell me nothing. Estate agents, you name it. So I used to go into these places and plug it in and show them the light or whatever. And again, people used to have this little smirk, little silly, that like they want to laugh and that. That's all right. But even at that community centre like where I installed the vending machine, I remember I went in there one time and just before that, I was driving up and down a road called Caledonian Road. Uh, near King's Cross, Holloway, them sides. I decided to go to the community centre and show one of the managers. And she liked it. And she wanted to liaise with the other manager. Anyway, months later, months after that, I installed three of those lights in like the, the foyer, two in a small meeting room, that's five, and then about four in a large meeting room. That's about nine. I charge them 50 pounds per light and 30 pounds to install each light. I made money. I made money from that. Again, one time, there was one social club in Edmonton their jet petrol station, their bouncers road. They converted it into, it's like a Turkish mini market, but it's big, yeah. It's like the size of, you know, like one of them Tesco's locals or Sainsbury's local, it's like one of those, like that kind of size. And I remember there was constructing, construction work inside. Again, I just rolled in there with my light, Yo, boss, man, I got this light for sale, blah, 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 blah. Dropped him a business card or whatever. He said he'll get back to me. I remember I didn't hear nothing from him for a couple of weeks. And he owns the kebab shop that's next to it. I went in there, like, oh, what are you saying, man? And he's like, have you got the light on you? I said, well, listen, I got. I live around the corner. I can, I can bring you the light or whatever. And he said, yeah, bring one. I brought one. Sold one. 
Can you bring another two? I went home, brought another two. By the end of the night, I sold the man about eight lights. You know, that day, that night, I had a cousin's birthday to go to. I didn't go. I was making money. Now, if I'd listened to everyone or allowed people's opinions to make me think that, oh, this is a stupid idea. You think I'll be sitting in this house? No way. I would not be sitting in this house. Now, this house, ain't, me sitting in this house ain't got nothing to do with me selling any lights, whatever. But if I didn't believe in my vending machine business idea, I wouldn't have had the courage to resign from work, although I got fired beforehand. But I didn't wouldn't have the mindset to resign from work. And before that, let me buy a property before that. So if I never if I never started that vending machine business, if I let people's opinions or their thoughts affect my decision making, I would not be sitting in this house right now. There would no there probably would not be a JY's TV, I'm telling you. Not at this time anyway. Yeah, maybe in about five or six years. Could have been a JY's TV. It might not have been this man neither. It could have been someone else called themselves JY's TV. So, guys, I'm telling you right now, you got any ideas, just try them out. Especially if it don't cost much money. There are. There's definitely no excuse. If it's all 20 grand or whatever and you ain't got it like that, then, yeah, you're going to want to review the idea. I get it. But if it's a cool, if it's a little idea that you want to test out for a thousand pounds, just do it, man. What's a thousand pounds? And if you ain't got a thousand pounds like that, then it, yeah, there's a problem. Either you're not earning enough, or you got bad spending habits and you're in debt. But the point of the video is, don't. Don't listen to what people have to say. Let them laugh. These are the, the you see these people that are laughing at you and stuff like that, or they might think your ideas are stupid. One day they will be like, "Fuck, man, how did he do it?" Telling you, telling you, or or they will come up with something stupid, like, oh, man, you you got lucky." Yeah, that you know that will be it. So so there will be a few outcomes either. They will be scratching their head thinking, how, how did he do it? Or they will say, you got lucky. Or they will be straight up, flat out, haters. Haters. Stay wise.